to start a new mimer today. Yesterday, we had the mimer. <clears throat> we actually didn't finish it. We got almost to the end, but I'd like to finish this. We can do this and finish it. We almost finished it, and we got to the main point. The point was yesterday <clears throat> that uh, uh, the Jewish people were like a baby in its mother's womb, and when they were born, so um, then they that was like a baby being, coming out of the mother's womb. When they were born, I mean, when the Jews got out of Egypt, when the Jews got out of Egypt, so it's like a baby coming out of the mother's womb. The same thing is right now. We are in Egypt. We would never really know it unless the Rebbe told us, but we're in Egypt. What's the point, difference between the, when the Jews were in Egypt? Back then, it was a physical thing also, as well as being spiritual, but it was also a physical thing. It was, uh, <clears throat> it was there, were, there were servants of Egypt. And now <clears throat> it's more spiritual and a, if you want to call it a, a, a conscious thing. <clears throat> True, the Rambam, the Maimonides, he says that there's no difference between now and the days of the Mashiach, except that in the days of the Mashiach, we won't be under the control of the non Jews, Shibud Malchiot. <clears throat> but that basically comes from our attitude because we see that today, the, uh, the Jews are basically free. I mean, in any, almost every country in the world, even in the most uh, oppressive countries, you know, the Arab countries and Iran and uh, et cetera, as the Jews that are there, they can learn the Torah if they want to. They can learn Torah, they can do commandments. <clears throat> True, they couldn't be, um, sit in the government, but <clears throat> they take that land of Israel. Here we are, we're free. We have a, our own army, we have our own this, and the people... And but the, the government is still worried all the time. You know, what will the United Nations say? What will this say? They want to be like the non Jews, <coughs> they don't want to express their Jewish identity. So basically, we're still under the control of the, 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 uh, the non Jewish governments, Shibud Malchiot. But that's not the purpose of this whole of, the, of these classes and everything, on, on the whole idea of Chabad. And, and, and not even the whole idea of Judaism. The whole basic idea of Judaism is to that we're chosen to advertise the Creator in the world and the Creator's Torah and tell the non-Jews about the seven wide commandments. <clears throat> and in that aspect, we are definitely, certainly in deep, deep fetal state. That the, that his, his head is between his knees and etc. And <clears throat> We're not just talking about the non-religious Jews. We're talking about the religious Jews. We're talking about me. We're talking about, right? <clears throat> we're, we're reading about these ideas of what God is. <clears throat> but the way that ex the Rebbe explains what should be the reaction of a person who really feels God is we're really far away. I mean, we should be just consumed with the love of God and awe of God and fear of doing the wrong thing. <clears throat> and just like we're afraid of, you know, driving the wrong side of the street natural healthy fear we should have of, of god all the time and we don't have it we should have faith in in god we should have joy in serving god but he says basically those are the things that avram and yitzhak and yaakov they gave us they gave us this thing of joy and that's what it says that il shaddai shaddaim <coughs> the breasts and that's what milk that's the difference in a baby that's born and he's not born before he's born he eats from his mother's there's an umbilical cord, his mouth is closed, and after he's born, so then he drinks milk, and that makes his personality grow. So he says, that was the Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Their whole thing is, is to make our emotions so that we're more emotional about God, and we're more, have a more, how do you say, intimate and personal relationship with Hashem, and that we react, and we act. <coughs> <clears throat> about uh, the way a person would act and react if he had something really valuable and that he was really doing a very meaningful thing, happy. That's the obvious. But Moshe's thing was that he gave us the Torah. And, and when God gave us the Torah, he gave us his essence. And that was given to Moshe. That was given to Moshe. And that's what God was complaining, was, 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 was chastising Moshe for. <clears throat> he was saying, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, <clears throat> They were mostly emotions. <clears throat> and when I didn't give them what they wanted, so they didn't complain. But you, your intellect, you should, you should be a little more 
how you say patient and aware, your whole thing is learning Torah. That's the Torah. To also, also to be emotional, attached to God. That's why the Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov are called our fathers. So you have to have the emotional connection and genuine, uh, you say, unity and appreciation of the Creator. That's the emotions. You have to have that. But Moshe, your thing is Torah. That's intellect. You have to try to be as aware of God's greatness as possible. And that's the thing that brought everybody. That's, that's already the essence. When God gave the Torah, he gave his essence. Okay. Okay. Let us learn another mimer. That's That was the summary of the last one. This is something interesting because it introduces us to this idea of the breaking of the vessels. And the breaking of the vessels is a very basic uh, <clears throat> principle in Judaism. In Judaism, I mean in, in Kabbalah, but especially in Hasidic Judaism, especially in Chabad. Very stressed. What's the breaking of the vessels? What does this mean? And we talked about it a little bit before. We talked about it with Esav and, and Yaakov, but not that much. And so God, when he created the world, he wanted that there should be separateness in the world. He wanted the world to be, to, to be a place where you did not feel God at all. <clears throat> and he wanted there to be in the world the potential to be evil, to go against God, <clears throat> to be separate from God. So this, in, in the sixth chapter of the Tanya, the sixth and the seventh chapter of the Tanya, it talks about these different levels of separation. It's called klipa, shells. Klipa is a shell, like a shell covers over a, tr- a, a nut or a, a fruit or something like that. So the same thing is, <clears throat> there the world, nature, God made it in a certain way that it would cover over godliness. But, but that doesn't make any sense because, I mean, God covered, it's like a turtle being hidden by his shell. Or a snail being hidden by the shell. The shell is the snail. Now, how can the, how can God hide over on Himself in the world? So God made this this amazing one of the stages of creation <clears throat> was that God broke these vessels. He made these very pure <clears throat> vessels of, for godliness. The godliness is called God's light, and the vessels. <coughs> that's what's called the vessels Orot V'Kelim and there was one stage in the creation and God made these vessels that, that, that had very pure we talked about this before like the mad scientists or the, you know, the genius uh, whatever it is uh, musician that he can't do anything else only music or the scientist he can't do anything else only you know, physics he walks out of the street in his pajamas because he's just thinking so deeply about his music or about his art or about his what is is one track mind one 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 trick you know a dog or something you can do one a dog that can sing one thing that's all i can do right but it's pretty amazing it's the same thing god when he created the world so he created the system but we talked about it before like a, a painter when he has on his palette these just like four basic colors or something <clears throat> and then he starts to intermix them and Anyway, so God made this basic pattern <clears throat> of the world, which are called the ten spherot. And each one was pure and separate from the other one. And then deliberately, he caused them to break. And it says in the vessels, because they had, didn't have any light inside, the lights went back up to their source, like a flame that goes up to its source. And the vessels, they came tumbling down, and that's what made separation in this world. It was a planned thing that that's what God wanted there to be, the breaking of the vessels. And unfortunately, man <clears throat> um, didn't get the message. They, they were supposed to be in this world bad and good so that man would be able to choose. <clears throat> it's the essence of man to have free choice. And man was supposed to choose. He was supposed to have the opportunity to get <clears throat> to serve God by refraining from bad, which sometimes that's the most difficult thing of, of all. You know, for a person to hold back his anger or hold back his lust or hold or or <clears throat> not pay any attention to the ideas of you know depression or or uh, suicide and you know <clears throat> and defeat 
and to be always positive, that's a very difficult thing. Very, very difficult. Something's much more difficult than doing good. You know, the, the, overcome the impulses of, you know, depression and aggression and addiction and things like that. <clears throat> so it's very difficult. But nevertheless, God wants us to, wants these things to be in the world. He wants these temptations and, and frustrations. He wants them to be in the world. So we will overcome them and we will, you know, not pay any attention to them. We won't give them any power. But sometimes the opposite happens. And this is the idea of Paro and Egypt. Egypt was the ultimate example of a whole entire nation making the wrong choice. Choosing evil. <clears throat> so let's go. That's it. Now that's going to be the idea of the snake. The going to Paro, right? <clears throat> so he says, take the staff, throw it in front of Paro. And it will become a serpent or a snake or whatever it is, a, the crocodile or a tanin. And then it says they did it. And then Paro called his sooth, his uh, magicians, and they did the same thing. <clears throat> and then the Yivla Mate Aaron at Matosam. And this is then, then Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. <clears throat> they all returned back to be staffs again. <clears throat> and uh, Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Okay, that was the first sign that Moshe did to Paro. Okay, first of all, number one, if you read the whole story, you see that this had absolutely, we talked about this yesterday, this had absolutely no effect on anybody. It seemingly didn't do anything to anyone, Right? Moshe of Aaron, they were supposed to show, God said, show them, show Paro this trick, and he's really going to be impressed. So they showed him the trick, nothing. Paro brought his magicians, and they did the same thing. <clears throat> Just in the end, it says that Moses', the, uh, Moshe and Aaron's, it's different opinions whose staff it was. In any case, the staff, it, the snake turned back to a staff, and so theirs also is turned back to a staff. Staff is like a, a big stick, right? Walking stick. And then our own staff ate up their staffs. Okay, but this is not this was not a plague. It was one not one of the plagues. It was supposed to be a sign that impressed Paro, and it did not impress him at all. I mean, after everything, and after all, all the ten plagues didn't impress him. But some of them impressed him at least a little bit, you see. Right? He, he, he was praying to pleading for Moshe, please leave, get out of here, take away this plague. <coughs> But this one didn't impress him at all. So why did God send him? Why did God send? Why did God Moshe tell? Uh, why did God tell Moshe to throw the stick in front of Paro, and it'll turn into a staff, and, it, and it'll turn back into a snake? What was the whole thing for? What was the purpose? Well, having to understand, and you know, Mata, to understand what is the staff, this walking stick shit, nefach that it turned back into a that it turned into a snake, and afterwards, and afterwards it turned back into a staff again. The gum and also Masha's why was this the first sign that Moshe saw, gave to showed to Paro? She not the Paro. And this was before all the ten plagues. This is not one of the ten plagues that Moshe brought on Paro. It was just sort of like a preliminary trick. Okay, so why did God tell Moshe to do it? Why, this was a very important thing. This was God told Moshe, be sure to take the staff along with you. <coughs> You're going to do all the miracles with the staff. And also beforehand, he showed the Jews the staff. He did the same trick to the Jews. He threw it on the ground and made it into a snake. And God said that that's one of the things you'll show the Jews. And then after that, take your hand and put it in your in your uh, vest pocket, whatever, and take it out. It'll be its source. And then he said, take the thing and turn it into blood. But the paro... He, the first one was the, the same first one that he showed to the Jews, taking a stick, turning it into a snake, and turning it back into a stick again. <clears throat> okay, and this was not one of the ten plagues. This was just like a 
a forward, a preparation miracle, introduction miracle, free sample. But at first glance, it wasn't a sample of anything. Well, it didn't affect Paro. It didn't do any. So Paro's, Moshe showed Paro that he can do the same thing that his sorcerers can do. <clears throat> so, so the Rebbe says, let's understand this. Now you have to realize that what's going on here. This is not just history. The Torah is not just a history book. <clears throat> it's not just you know hieroglyphics or whatever it is or <clears throat> something. The Torah is the, is the 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 work of the creator of the universe. Every single word is being written by the creator of the universe, including all everything that's there, the stories and the, the, the names of the different you know na nations and princes and kings and things like that. Things that seem to be totally <clears throat> irrelevant to anything. Every one of them is the word. That's what a lot of the, the Kabbalah books deal with to show that the secrets, the deep secrets that are involved in the most seemingly meaningless <clears throat> details that are in the Torah. <clears throat> the, the, the sons, the, the offspring of Yishmael, the offspring of Adam, who knows these people? Who are they? Where are they? Where are they buried? Where do they live? Absolutely meaningless, seemingly. But it's not. This is all the word of God, and everything comes to teach us something. That's the most important thing. <laughs> So what is this strange story about the stick and the snake and the snake going back to a stick? What does it teach us? It says, that the Jewish people emptied out Egypt. Omer is on the rabbi say, that the Jewish people made it like a matzula, like a, a, a brook, like a stream that hasn't got any fish in it. Right? It says the it says a uh, matsuda Shane Bodagan, like a big storehouse that there's no nothing in there, no wheat in there. <clears throat> they emptied it out. <clears throat> what do you mean they emptied out Egypt? What, did they, what does that mean? What did they empty out? <clears throat> <clears throat> what did they empty out? There was still the country, there were still people there. What did they empty out exactly? They left personally. They took a lot of money with them, but I'm sure people had some money left. There was something left. They didn't take out everything. Someone must have had a ring or, or a, they let, took out every. What does it mean? They took out everything. It says, Perish, what does it mean when the Jews left Egypt? Shalaktu, they took out Kalanitsutsot, all the sparks. Shenaflu, they fell down. Bishvira. In the breaking, Alayhem, to themselves. They took out all the sparks that fell down into Egypt. They took it all to themselves. The Nitroknu Mitzrayim, ma'am, and Egypt became emptied out from these sparks. We'll talk about this in a minute. Hachi Nisharuka Matsula until it remained like a stream that had no fish in it. Below Yihish Irusham, Afilu Nitsutsacha, there was not even one spark that was left. <clears throat> what are these sparks? What are we talking about? What are the sparks? So it says that the, the, when, when God created the world in this process that I just told you about, the breaking of the vessels, it says that there fell down 288 sparks. These were general powers of pleasure and meaning <clears throat> that fell into the world and became detached, so to speak, from God. These are the vessels of these things. So now there's all this pleasure and this meaning in the world that's detached from any source. So a person now can find meaning from robbing a store or, or uh, lying or cheating or stealing or right meaning between getting the, the, the addicted to something, meaning in, in war and hurting other people. All of a sudden, everything became confused. And those are these sparks. These sparks are sparks of life, of you, you, utilization. Right? You have a table, and the table, you can use it for something. Well, the, that use, that gives life to the table. That's like the spark that's in it. And it says that the Jews left Egypt. It says, Erev Rav Aloitam. Rav is the numerical value of 202. So 202 of these 288 sparks <clears throat> were taken out when the Jews left Egypt. 
They took them out. How did they take them out? By the hard work that they did and the suffering that they did. And that through this suffering, they still believed in God. That's the point. That's called raising up the sparks. That in an impossible situation, in a difficult situation where you don't see God, where everything is all confused, that's this confusion is because of these sparks. <clears throat> but you are not confused and you still believe in the Creator and you, <clears throat> and you still do what the Creator wants you to do. That's called raising up the sparks. <clears throat> now, ideally, only the, only the Jewish people can do This is the job of the Jewish people. That's the job of the Torah. The job mostly of the non-Jews is to, to make the world an orderly place. The world is supposed to be orderly. In other words, not to do bad. That's the main thing of the non-Jews. Not to do bad. <clears throat> to be good people, to be honest people, to be spiritual people, to be religious people, to be proper people, to live a meaningful life, a blessed life. But not godly people. Godly people, that's the Jews. <clears throat> it says the Jews, they have this godly job, this godly task. And the godly task is lifting up these sparks. In other words, taking everything in the world that has a use, has a meaning, has a this, and to use it according to the Torah. Some things you have to avoid. That's also using it according to the Torah. But mainly having the proper attitude, etc. That a Jew does something in the world, some sort of a connection to God that it does, that namely in using the world that the non-Jews don't have. Exactly the opposite. The non-Jews are part of the world. The non-Jews are supposed to be elevated by the world. It's supposed to put meaning into the non-Jews. Non-Jews, like we say in Elena, we say three times a day, the whole world should recognize and know Yakiru Vieru that everyone in the world should know and recognize. So this is all an example of raising up the sparks. When the Jews were in Egypt, 210, 200, the, the 210 years they were in Egypt, and all of this time that they were in Egypt, they still believed in God. They didn't change their names. They said this, this is an impossible situation. And they still held on to Godly. So this elevated these sparks. <clears throat> Let's understand what are these sparks that fell on the breaking of the vessels? Inyan alosam. What does it mean to elevate them, raise them up? Inyan is like this. Inyan you do. It's known. Inyan a shavira that this whole idea of the breaking of the vessels, who it's hinted at in a lot of different ways in the Torah. One of the ways is mitat zayin amalachim kadmon is the death of the seven primordial kings of Tohu. Shinishbru that they broke the Naflu and they fell Lamata below into Bria, Yetzira, and Asiya. They became a clipot to be Klippa and Sitra Achra. Sitra Achra means the other side. Okay, again, <clears throat> God creates the world, right? He creates the world all the time, but he creates the world in a system. The world is created in a system. And this system is something like the form of a man, human being. Your head is on the top, etc. Intellect is in your head. Your emotions are in the body. That's below your intellect. In emotions, then action, speech, that's even below. So it's the same thing is that there's, there's basically four dimensions of reality that God creates. Basically four. And these four are subdivided and subdivided and there's levels which are above that, but nevertheless, the highest level of reality, of created reality, if you want to call it, that's the, we'll call the world of Atsilut. The world of Atsilut is another word, word for holiness. It, 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 usually in, in other Kabbalah books, that's God. Atsilut is another name for God. Even though it's, Atsilut is not the essence of God, but still the, the aspects of it. Atsilut is God, pure holiness. Bria, the three lower worlds, Bria, Yetzir, and Asiya, that's already, Bria means the world of creation. It's creation with no form, with no substance, but it still is creation. It seems to be separate from the Creator. <clears throat> That's where the place where the angels are, souls are. <clears throat> That's already creation. And Yetzirah means not only is there creation, but there's also a form. And Asiya is not only is there creation and form. That's this physical world. There's also physicality. That's really separated. But it says that God broke these vessels of the world of Tohu. We said that there were, what did I say? That there was 10 Sfirot. Well, the, only the bottom seven ones really broke. That was the emotions. That's referred to in the Torah, the seven kings 
the primordial kings of Tohu. It's hinted at also in the, in the, in the, 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 the kings that came from, Ed, from Edom, from Esau. They broke and they fell down below, like I said, and they came into where the level of Bria, Yetzir, and Asiya. And this made Klippa and Sitrach. Like I said, Klippa, Sitrach means the other side. In other words, the feeling that there's something other than God. So how does there be, how, how, where is there evil in the world, bad in the world, confusion in the world? It all comes from this breaking of the vessels and God wanted it to be there. Why? So that we would have free choice and we would have <clears throat> elevate the world. Without that, there wouldn't be any world. Hainu, Kamo, Alderach, Mashal, for instance, Ben Hashem, Asadam, when a person, Shekorim, Bo, Lagu, before the soul comes into the body, Hayata, it was, Betela, Bataklis, it was totally unified, <clears throat> Lagabi or in soap with the infinite light of God, like it says, like it says, God is alive that I'm that I stood before him. I think Elijah the prophet said this. Hainu Mishun, because oh Shalom Herschel, wonderful. Thank you for coming. Great. Okay, we're learning about the breaking of the vessels. We're learning about the breaking of the vessels. <clears throat> we're not blaming you we're just to the breaking of the vessels that happened before the world was created so but we are, it, nevertheless even though you aren't at fault but you have to fix them and me too and that's what our job is so says the Rebbe that's the, the Jews went into Egypt in order to elevate these sparks that came from the breaking of the vessels simply put <clears throat> When God created the world, he also created in the world the potential to do bad, to be separate from God, to ignore God, to be, that was the whole sin of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Before that, evil was existing, but it was separate. It wasn't internalized so much. Adam was supposed to have made the right choice. That's why God put separateness and evil and what's called klippa and sitra achra, the other side, he put all these things in the world so that man would make the right choice and resist them. But he didn't. He said, hey, this is this evil stuff. This is pretty good. It's not so evil. <clears throat> and so therefore he got all confused and the world has been confused up to now. He brought death into the world till this very day. So we have to fix it up. That's it. It's, it's in our hands. He says, Hainu Mishon, because Sha'az Loa Yadavar Machshich, when God, the soul, the soul, before the soul comes into the body, the soul is totally one with the Creator. Why? Because there was nothing to darken, who master and conceal on godliness. Agilo <clears throat> elokus, the revelation of God. Mochach, therefore, the soul was betela b'makora, betachlis. Therefore, the soul was totally unified in its source, the soul. So the, the soul was basking in oneness and pure life. The cave she heard the Lamata, but then as soon as the soul came down below, Nisnabisha Baguf and it got put into a body. Hachumi, a physical body, as I then the goof must Then the body conceals on the soul. And you have to realize this, uh, remember, this is what God wants. Liod nidma haolam that the world seems to be liyesh v'davar nifrad to be a separate thing ifne atzmo on its own. Just one instant, please. I just want to close the door. As soon as the soul comes down into the body, then all of a sudden it has its own identity, identity, and it forgets where it came from and it forgets where it's coming from. I mean, the same God that created the soul before it came to the body is creating us now. Same exact thing. There's no difference. Just that now the whole or order is different, so that the soul is inside of the body, and the body overpowers, and all the sensations of the body are very confusing. Cave and since it comes down below and is in the body, then the body hides over it, and the world seems to be the real reality. 
and to be separate on its own. The ain raw, you can't see this bitl, you can't see the surrender of all the worlds regarding the light of God. That creates it constantly. <clears throat> Similarly, in a way out of example, this is the idea of the breaking of the vessels. What's this idea of breaking of the vessels? Shenaflu, that they fell down, these sparks of tohu, and they were enclosed in klipa, in the world of Bria, Yetzir, and Asiya. Shea klipa, that this klipa, that this, <clears throat> the shells, the concealment of the world, hides over this spark and mastirim ota, and it blocks it. Mikol tzad in every way, Shalo yargishu giloi or and so if you won't feel the revelation of the light of God. Okay, where are these sparks? So it says what happened was is when <clears throat> these vessels broke, so the light which was in the vessels, it went back up to its source, like fire goes up to its source, and the vessels came down. But on these vessels was still a little bit of light. And this little bit of light that fell down, this is the life force and the pleasure and things like that, especially the pleasures of this whole world. But, but these little sparks, they're pure godliness. But the thing is, is because it fell down, so <clears throat> it's totally confused. It's totally confused. <clears throat> like sometimes you have people, uh, there were a lot of cases of like this, big important uh, ministers or whatever that take bribes. Now there's all these times there's scandals. There's supposed to be some big scandal going on now. Right, scandal that's going on now. But a big, important, talented, gifted people that are put into high places because of their abilities. And all of a sudden, they go running after money or pleasures or something. And they just fall down. And they fall. And their genius is still there. It's just there, but it's just totally covered over this addictions to whatever they have. They, they, right? Desire for power or something. Or pleasure. So that's called falling down. It's like a spark fell down. All of a sudden, <clears throat> you can't see any godliness. You can't see any of the reason, the goodness in these people that was the reason that they were chosen in the first place. The same thing is that's what God did. He took this light, pure light of godliness, and purposely put it that it's in this world concealed. And it's concealed from every side. Shalom Yergishu Giloyor, that you can't feel the revelation of God at all until that it can be a separate thing on itself. Like it said, like Paro said, it's from one of, one of these, <clears throat> was the prov, the Paro is called the Tanin Agadol, and he said, the river is mine and I made myself. And Paro, it says over there that the, the, in the Chumash that Paro used to go in the morning, he would go to the bathroom. He would relieve himself. He would go into the into the river Nile, the river Nile, and he would relieve himself. I, the river Nile, that everybody worshipped the river. River, they worshipped the river. <laughs> they were that's the way you worship. There were some people that was a real a, a worship which called Baal Paor. The people went to the bathroom in front of this this uh, the idol that they had. It was very popular in Israel also. And the reason was the, I mean, Balpor and this thing also of Paro, the reason these things are, are popular, <coughs> even though they're so low and disgusting, is because that's where they got their pleasure from. That's where they got their power from, from being low and disgusting. These sparks that fell down. So they, they fell down, this whole idea of coming down excrement, coming out, the lowest things. And it says that Paro said to the degree that he got his life from the river, they worshiped the river, and he said, you know who made the river? I did. And you know who made me? I did. Your, the river became, is mine, and I created myself. I see Tanya, I made myself. <clears throat> and it was so crooked and, and weird was his mind that he really thought that he was God and that he created himself. What this means, I have absolutely no idea what he was thinking. But that's basically what everybody thinks to a certain degree, right? Where is God? I made myself. I call the shots. Rock, the coral, they admit that there's such a thing as God, but they say God is too high up. He's what's called the God of gods. That's the basis of idolatry. The God is so far away, you have to have something in the middle. You have to have something in the middle. 
<clears throat> God is, is too far away. If you're talking about who's the God that's going to rule the world, that's me. Even though the break, before the breaking of the vessels, there were sparks. But these sparks were totally negated. They were totally negated and unified with Ein Sof Borchu. Because as then, Haya Mitgale, there was revealed godliness in them. The Giloi, the Yichud Gomer. Right? Like we said a lot of times, <clears throat> everybody has a heart. Everybody has lungs. Everybody has a liver. Right? Everybody has a, a, a spleen or whatever. The, every, it should only be, everybody should be blessed that they never feel their heart. They never feel their liver. They never feel their, 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 their lungs. When a person feels these things, it's a sign that he's sick. <clears throat> a thing that works, functions properly means that he doesn't feel himself. Right? In an orchestra, the, 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 the if a person thinks about himself and how he sounds and this, then it's not going to sound good. He hears the whole music and he hears his contribution to it. He does his kind of same in sports, whatever thing, teamwork, an army. That, that's a properly functioning person, a properly functioning person. Well, you don't feel yourself. <clears throat> Since that's the way all these sparks were before they came into the world, like the soul was before it came into the world. But after the breaking of the vessels, she are doing the suits that these sparks came down and they were put into the world, something like how the soul is enclosed in the body, that the world covers over them, a mastirum, a gilel, who's revealed godliness, kamashal aguf, like the body that covers over the soul. Lokak, therefore, enam yocholim, they're not able to be in this level of bitl. Therefore, these sparks are not able to be connected and be healthy. Kamosha ayil petrila, like they were in the first place. Therefore, you have this world, the whole world is sick. Right? And that's why God gave the Torah and the world is supposed to be to heal it. But we have to heal ourselves also. We're also sick. As long as you feel egotistically, you get it's, it's, it says that a person that gets angry, he worships idols. Why can't, it's forbidden to get angry. Come on. I, I understand it's forbidden to eat you know, pork and it's forbidden to steal. It's forbidden to get angry. It's the most natural thing in the world to get angry, right? Is right, and that's that's why it's bad. Who says you should be in, in nature? Nature covers over God. Sometimes nature is good. A, a mother loves her children. A, a father loves his his, his 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 wife. His father. Right? Some loves are good. Some things are very good. Nature. <clears throat> but if you do it only because of nature, then it can be tumbled down. It can be not connected to God. Right? The best example in the world were the German people before World War II. They were the most uh, how do you say, the, the, the uh, philosophical and uh, productive and cultured and this, and in the name of philosophy and culture and this, they can, no, that's called the breaking of the vessels. <clears throat> because of being separated from God, you know what I mean? So then you think you're God. You can do whatever you want. Therefore, that's what it says, Lochem, therefore, Nikra, it's called klipas. That's why they're called shells. Shehem, commercial a klipa. This is like shells. That the shell covers over the fruit. And the main thing, of course, is the fruit, which is inside of it. But nevertheless, the shell conceals it. It's like the example of a shell on a nut. And the only way that you can take it out of this fruit, sometimes the only way you can reveal the fruit Right, to reveal the, the fruit inside of the nut or inside of kiim ayude shvira. Sometimes you have to break the shells. That's why the whole thing of the ten plagues, in order to take these <coughs> holiness, sparks of holiness from the klipa, hamasterium, which conceals over it. <coughs> there had to be shvira the klipa. They had to break these shells. And what was the shells? Egypt. This is the whole thing of, of the miracles and the signs and the plagues from Egypt, like we're going to learn. If God wants. Okay, so here we have <clears throat> Paro, the king of Egypt. According to some opinions, he ruled over the whole world. And his whole essence, all of his power and everything that he got <clears throat> was from selfishness. And where did he get the selfishness from? From God. 
<coughs> God gave him the selfish. This comes from what's called the breaking of the vessels. It was the thing that God wanted. And God wanted that there should be the potential of evil in the world. God did not want that should be actual. But on the other hand, what can you do? God wanted there should be the potential of evil in the world. God wanted that people should have free will. right? God wanted that people should feel egotistical and that they should choose what was not good. But they were, and nevertheless, God wanted that people should resist this, defy it, defy nature, defy their own nature. Paro did not do so. And that's the whole story of the Jews being prisoned inside of Egypt and why there had to be the 10 plagues in order to take the Jews out of Egypt. It wasn't to torture the Egyptians or to get re revenge on them or whatever, but really what it was was in order to re release and reveal the good and to also to be a lesson to us what we have to do sometimes to ourselves. Also, we have to break our impulses, as we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. And now let's learn the Sikh of the Rebbe. We're in the middle. Wonderful. All right, so we learned the Sikh, we're learning the Sikh of the Rebbe. <clears throat> this is from Chela Gimel. And the, the mainly what the Rebbe is saying over here is he's asking a, a question on Moshe's question. Moshe asked the question to God, why are you torturing the Jewish people? Why did you send me? And God gave him back an answer. <clears throat> Abraham, Isaac, and Yitzchak, <clears throat> they got a revelation to, to, from me in the name El Shaddai. A lower revelation than what you're going to get, Moshe. And they didn't ask any questions, and now you're asking all these questions. Right? They didn't ask any questions. Why is <clears throat> so? What, what is God saying? God is saying to Moshe, you should be like Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. You no, know, if God wanted him to be like Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, so then what did you have to create Moshe for? Why not give the Torah through Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov? If Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov were so <clears throat> great, it's, no, 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 no. I, I want there to be Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. I want there to be you also, Moshe. You also, but you have to learn from them. You just have to learn from them. Let's not go overboard here. Right? I want you to be, you have something very special. That's what we just learned in the Mimer in the morning. <clears throat> Moshe, your thing is awareness of God. <clears throat> Intellect. <clears throat> Understanding God. Learning the Torah. Connecting to God with intellect. Connecting to God with with understanding, comprehension. That's your job, Moshe. You want to call it being surrendered to God, even in the intellect. A lot of times they're simple Jews, right? And they can be really be connected to God in a way that we should be envious of, you know, totally unquestioning. But if someone comes along and asks them too many questions, put too many doubts, as they leave Judaism, that, that was, I mean, that was what happened with a lot of the Sephardic Jews when they came to Israel, a lot of them, they came to in in in, in uh, you know T Yemen, Taman, Yemen, and a lot of them also in Morocco, the Jews in Morocco. Even though there was always already the alliance over there, and the Jews in a lot, from the other Sephardic places, uh, the, the Tunis and this, and they came here. They were religious. They believed in God unconditionally, but as soon as they came to Israel as uh, all of a sudden they had all sorts of questions and you know maybe it's not really necessary to keep Shabbos here. I see that the that the, the prime minister of Israel doesn't keep Shabbos. I see that the high court doesn't eat kosher. I see that the, 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 all the big ministers and everything, they don't keep any of the commandments. You know, what's really going on? In the schools, they educated, and all of a sudden the questions <clears throat> made them confused. And they left Judaism. A lot of them did. Now, thank God, a lot of them are coming back. <clears throat> but they couldn't take the questions. The intellect was too much. Generally speaking, the Ashkenazic Jews that came religious, usually, if they came religious, right? if they didn't come religious, then they were, they, they were the ones that, that, that caused the, the Sephardic Jews to leave. Right? Everybody, the Sephardic Jews had this feeling of, 
you know, the Ashkenazic Jews, they, they took over the land and they, they must be superior somehow or other. And we should listen to what they say, the universities and told them all sorts of names of philosophers and things they'd never even heard of. And now nobody hears about the, the philosophers now today. Anyway. <clears throat> but nevertheless, the, 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 the advantage of intellect is, is that it's a deeper connection with God in some way. And emotion, even though it's a more intimate connection with God, and unquestioning, but as soon as there's questions, sometimes it can wreck it. So therefore, Moshe had to incorporate both of these ways of serving God, both Avram Yitzhak Yaakov and also his way of Torah. So let's take it from here. And that's what God was saying to Moshe. Moshe, you're the greatest. You have the Torah, you're going to get the Torah. But you cannot do it without <clears throat> adopting the attitude of Avram and Yitzhak and Yaakov as well to, to leave the Tachuna because of this characteristic of the emotions emotions loving God, fearing God being emotional about God Vazay bring to Royce to Paul Mamish, which another thing is, is emotions bring to action intellect is a big problem with intellect Right? A person can be very intellectual. He can understand the whole Torah. Right? Just as a person who's very emotional, he can be swayed by intellect ideas. And then also a person, the other way around, a person who's too intellectual, as uh, it could be he'll never really do anything. He'll have all these wonderful ideas, and but he'll never do any commandments. Right? He becomes enamored with, you know, <clears throat> the ideas of God and even, even emotions about God, the idea of loving God and understanding, but he never actually does, puts on tefillin or keeps Shabbat or anything. Eh, that's for simple people, not for me. He says that's one big advantage of Abraham and Yitzhak and Yaakov. Their main thing was emotions and emotions bring through to a person really loves God, right? A person can have love toward God, spiritual feelings and emotions. But a person who really loves God himself, it brings to action. But Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov, and then their Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov was equal, which main, their main thing is emotions, grew from, that's why they were called the fathers of Judaism. The their mimer, like the saying of the rabbis, uh, is Ein korim avos el <clears throat> There are only three fathers of Judaism. Why are they called fathers? Because fathers imply that there's offspring, there's results. Him bringing told us. This is expressed in two ways. Number one, by Zay, by the Avos, Avram Yitzhak Yaakov, having the Midas Aroiske Mont, Maisim Tovim. By Avram Yitzhak Yaakov, their emotions which they had, this demanded good deeds, the poil actually. Like it says, told shall tzadikim maisim tovim. Like it says, the real <clears throat> fruits, the offspring of tzadikim, are their good deeds, even more than their actual children. It says by zehaben getan. That's number one. Number two is <clears throat> emotions bring to action, and number two is emotions haben getan mitn zulus means that you go out and deal with other people. Was thus is Oich their main from Avos. <clears throat> this is another reason why they were called the Avot, the fathers. Azir Inyan Haben Gemont Yerushin, because their qualities, their characteristics, they wanted to give over to the children and to the children's children forever. So they're called the fathers because number one, what they did brought the deed. And number two, they're called the fathers because they inherited to the, us their traits, like a father inherits to the son. <clears throat> According to this, we can understand what Rashi says in the beginning <clears throat> of our Torah portion. That Moshe says, Moshe says to God, why have you done, tortured these Jewish people? And God says back to Moshe, I have appeared to the Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov, and Moshe says, the Avos, the fathers. Right? 
God says, I appeared to Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And Moshe says, the fathers. That's what, what, what he had to say, the fathers. Everybody knows that. What, did Mo, what, did, what is Rashi? Rashi usually comes to answer a question or to tell us something we wouldn't know normally. What is Rashi telling us here? That Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov, they're called the Avos. They're called the fathers. A lot of people ask a question, why does Rashi, what is Rashi adding by telling us that Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, that they are our fathers? Under the other song, and some people want to say is that Rashi, he is just saying it in a short way. In them ersten halben pasuk, while beiker stelt er zich oif der verter beel shadai. Ushemio dodati, Hashem lo nadati lem. <clears throat> Rashi is trying to say, is explaining the second part of the sentence. Said, I appeared to Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov in the name El Shaddai, and my name I didn't let known to them. He says, what? Means that God did not appear to all of the fathers. So he said, the Avos, Vos is Doch, Ober, and it moving. But Rebbe says, that's not such a good answer. While Rashi had zich balt, you can still in, of the verter weiter. The, uh, the word. He could have said the further words later on when the Gans did bring in the Erster Verta for Pasuk. <clears throat> Rashi could have just brought the last words of the sentence if that's what he was explaining and not the first words. It says the Avram Yitzhak Yaakov, he brings Rashi brings the words Avram Yitzhak Yaakov, and on that he comments that these are the fathers, not what it says afterwards. Oh, and the front, and especially according to that, what it says, that according to the Shalah. Shalah is Rabbi Yeshaya Horvitz, a very great Jew that lived like 350 years ago, something, 400 years ago. The Shnei Luchot Abrit, or Nachmer, and even more from the Alter Rebbe, from the Alter Rebbe, and the Rebbe's word show after it, that they had Mefligavan, Oif, the, and every word from Rashi. As Monze Havada Yabir. Certainly we have to have an explanation. Why does Rashi say Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov? Now, you have to understand, Rashi was just, it wasn't like a commentary, like, like a normal, intellectual, intelligent genius. Rashi was a holy person. And he had a special holiness. And maybe Rashi was even like the Mashiach of his generation. Rashi was an amazingly holy person, besides being gifted. And every word that he said had a special, very, very deep importance to it in our lives. Every word, Rashi. We can't express how important every word Rashi says. The Rebbe had long sikhas about Rashi, what Rashi intended. <clears throat> what is Rashi adding by telling us that Avram, Mitzvah, and Yaakov, they are our fathers? In their parish, in the meaning, it says Rashi, Vilda Unterstreich, and Rashi wants to stress that the main thing of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov is that they are our fathers. Hagam, even though that each one of them had their own individual nature and his own individual way of serving, Avram is chesed, Yitzhak is gavura. Avram, it says, is kindness and love. Yitzhak is power and awe. And Yaakov is tiferous, is beauty and balance. When by Yedr from Zayn, by each one of them, and they were the ultimate completion of serving God with that particular trait. But nevertheless, is nit there, the Iker, that's not the main thing of them. The main thing of the Avram Yitzhak Yaakov was not that they gave us love and fear and this. The main thing is they were fathers. They were our fathers. Not that they served God <clears throat> with love and fear, but that they were fathers. What does it mean? Like it says about Avram. The, the, the first of the fathers, God says, I know him, that he will give to his children afterwards, etc. God said, loved Abraham. Why? Because he knew that Avram was going to give over to his children these traits. He was a father. Not just that Avram served God with love and he was the first one, but that he gave this over. Ered the month, nit the mila from Zainavoda, not his individual service, what Avram did, but the fact is that he gave it over and he brought it into action like we started the class with. So therefore, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, that's what God was trying to tell Moshe. <clears throat> you have to adapt also the attributes of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, namely what? 
You have to be the emotions that come to action and also that you pass on to the future generation. When Agam is the Pasuk state, even though that it doesn't say that Avram, it doesn't say the word that they are our fathers, is like we say when we pray, the God of our fathers. In the Torah, it doesn't say that here. But Rashi, that's why Rashi explains that the main thing of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov is that their thing is emotions, but is that that their fathers, namely that they bring results in physical action and also to their offspring. That's what God, Abraham, that's what God also demanded from Moshe. That's what God is trying to tell Moshe Rabbeinu here. As oich bayim, zol zayin the teva midos, then Moshe should also have this aspect of emotions. Don't be cold. Don't be just for yourself. Chach zayin inyan is, chachma, even though the whole thing of Moshe was intellect, awareness of God, consciousness of God, <coughs> intelligence, understanding, zayin afran tzvi yani, but nevertheless, there has to be two things. First of all, by im zon zich nich telen kain shilos. First of all, Moshe, don't ask too many questions. Nor nemen with Kabbalah soul. Good and intellect demands questions. Questions, like we said a lot of times, are very good in Judaism, but that's not the basis of Judaism. The basis of Judaism is serving God unquestionably. Also, asking questions unquestionably. Right? I'm asking a question because it's an obligation to ask questions. We have to understand. It's a, it's a, it's a, a mitzvah to try to understand as much as possible. <coughs> I remember the story they told Professor Bronover. They may have a, a, a speedy healing. I haven't heard from him in a long time. Professor Bronover, I used to be a bit close to him. And he told a story. And he said that before he was, he was a professor in Russia. And um, this, I guess, must have been like in the time of Khrushchev, Khrushchev afterwards. In any case, he was a professor in, in Russia. He knew that he was a Jew, and he was a professor. And um, <clears throat> he said that he saw, he met up with Chabad. It's a, it's a long story. He saw somebody reading the Tanya, and he asked him, what is this book that you're reading? And he says, it's called the Tanya. He said, that's uh, the, <clears throat> very nice. <clears throat> He said, have you been learning this? It looks like you, the, the book is all worn down. He said, yeah, I've been learning this book for like 20 years. It's 20 years. He, he used to finish, he, it's what he said in lectures. I used to finish like five books a week. And all of a sudden, this person's one book he's been learning for 20 years. What the, Either the person must be very, very slow. <clears throat> must be very slow. Or maybe he doesn't know how to read. So he said, here, take the book and read. He gave it, I guess, a Russian translation. And he said afterwards, he came to this person. He had like 200 questions on Judaism. So he said, I'd like to ask you the question. He says, good, good, we'll learn. We'll, uh, he said, but before he asked the questions, let's just learn a little bit first. And then next week, you'll ask the questions. Okay, let's, so they learned. He said, okay, this week, you want to ask the questions? He said, well, to tell you the truth, I I." don't have as many questions this week. I mean, the learning that we did last week, he said, um, that answered a lot of my questions. So you know what? Let's wait another week and I'll ask another. I'll, I'll ask them. Maybe we'll... So they, they learned the next week or the next month, whatever, and fell off more questions. And he would finish the lecture, Professor Bronover. And he would say, this was 30 years ago. So the fact of the matter is, since then I've become a, a religious Jew and I learned Torah and children are really... He said, he said, but you should know that never, I still have a few questions. He said, I still have a few questions left. But to have questions is nothing wrong. And Moshe also had questions. But God is telling to Moshe, Judaism, questions are great, but that's not what the basis of Judaism. The basis of Judaism was called Kabbalah Tov. You do what God says unquestionably. And one of the things God wants you to do is to ask questions. But ask questions, and he wants you to get answers also. But if you don't get the answers... That doesn't touch on the essence and the basis of Judaism. So you have a question. So you have a question for, for years. So you keep asking the question. A lot of times you can ask a question, you can get an answer, right? And then and you should understand, it's a very basic thing about Judaism that God does exist. <laughs> and that God also 
takes care of people individually, everything individually. In fact, everything that occurs in the world, God arranges it. This is the mystery of all mysteries. <clears throat> it says, Ataya Dea Raze Olam. It says, God, you know the mysteries of the world. I heard that the Alter Rebbe said that the mysteries of the world, the physical world, that's deeper than the mysteries of the Torah. <clears throat> how this bird caught this worm, how this flower got the ray, ray of sun this way. You know, on one end, you can say it's meaningless, but on the other end, if it's meaningful, then it's just really, it's mind-boggling. There's so many details, and every single detail has a meaning. It. <clears throat> God is creating everything. Like I said before. <clears throat> so to have questions is a very good thing. <clears throat> Having questions is a very good thing. <clears throat> a lot of times, you can have a question, you get an answer, and all of a sudden, God arranges it that you come across something in a book or somebody says something, and all of a sudden, wow, I remember I had that question. That's a better answer than what I had before. You know, the, when all of a sudden you think, well, well, maybe there's a better answer than the one I he just gave me also. So you just sort of remain <laughs> with this question all the time, and it makes life interesting. Er zol in a tenua from Hamshach Alamata. Number one is, first of all, you have to have blind acceptance. Total receiving of the yoke of God without unquestioning, no questions whatsoever. Whatever God does is for the best. And one of the things, this is also to ask questions, but like I said, that's not the basis. Number two is that a person should always be going outward. V. Mergefind, like we find by Moshe Rabbeinu after Matan Torah. That Matan Torah was always dealing with things that are outside of himself. The Jewish people, even more than Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov, their main thing was emotion, serving God and showing how it's possible to serve God with love. There's Zion Gevan, Roy Tzon. <clears throat> but nevertheless, in order to maintain their, <clears throat> their purity, they had to be shepherds. When in a Gevaser Moz, in a certain sense, they were removed from the world. Moshe, except for Yosef. Yosef was the only exception. Moshe, though, had mevar gavar the Torah, b'shivim lashen. It says, before Moshe received the Torah, it says he was a shepherd. He was, he was tending the sheep of Yitro. But after the Torah, then it says Moshe translated the Torah into 70 languages for the Gansen Bell, for the whole entire world. And for the Jews, it says, God said, I want you to bear all the Jews, like lift them all up, hold them to your bosom. When does, so Moshe Rabbeinu, we see that you have to go outward. Take this aspect of Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov. When does Zayin and the Tzvei Ois Shprachen, which the Midrash, <clears throat> these are the two expressions which say in the Midrash regarding the Chibur, Maila Umata, was Hadzich Avgatan by Matan Torah. <clears throat> it says <clears throat> in the Midrash that before <clears throat> Matan Torah, the spiritual worlds were spiritual and the physical was physical. You know, there's a person that wanted to be a spiritual person, he had to leave the world. He had to leave the world and he, had to, he could become spiritual. And a person that was a spiritual person, he wanted to become physical, that's it. He had to forget about the monastery or whatever he was and he had to come out into the physical world. Uh, that's what it says. After the Torah was given, the upper worlds came down here. Themselba, themselba, uh, it came down below. Look at the Zelba, the same thing, is by every human being. Olam Katan, man is called a small world. She, Seichel, intellect, was his Zain which the nature is to be. Up, get up, get kite to be removed and start and and be elevated from the world. Nevertheless, intellect should come down into the world. And it says, What happened in Mount Sinai? It says, The upper worlds came down here and the lower worlds went up. And there was, there was a total connection. A Jew can, in this world, does a commandment, a commandment comes from the essence of God. So we see the essence of God came down into the world in a commandment. And the same thing is, the lowest went to the highest levels. 
a Jew by doing a commandment in this world, <coughs> he elevates himself to the highest aspects of God. So it, that's what it says. The higher world, all, also we should internalize this in, our, in ourselves. The highest aspect of ourselves should come down, namely our intellect should come down into the physical world and be involved in physical things. That's what God said to Moshe, be a father, be into the world. And second, Tachtoni, the lower worlds would go up as the teva, the nature, from the feet. <clears throat> Vus is their nidris, which is the lowest limb of a person, <clears throat> unfalked ois al horoz, and does, follows the orders of the mind <clears throat> from cup, not asking why, not asking for any reasons. So, Adi Teva from Regal Tachton Oich Zayin in the Rosh, <clears throat> that this aspect of the foot, which the foot does what the and does automatically without asking any questions, this should also be integrated in your head. So the head should come down into the world, namely what the intellectual ideas and the trend and the 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 the, 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 the tremendous understanding that you have should be involved in other people and should be involved in the world doing things. And so, as other way, the bottom should go up. The same unquestioning acceptance that the feet have, it automatically do what the head says, that should go up to be in your head. A person's mind should <clears throat> also adapt this idea of serving God like a foot, like a foot, unquestioningly. <clears throat> When oich in seichel, but also in intellect in your mind, <coughs> there should be this aspect of doing everything with kabbalat all, with total acceptance, without asking any questions. So that's what God was telling to Moshe. Moshe, you're starting a whole new thing. You're going to start a whole new era, eon, in Judaism. Up to now in Judaism, holy people were holy and physical people were physical. Mundane was mundane, holy was holy. And you can get a little bit inspired, right? A little bit. The mundane people, they got a little inspired. <clears throat> and the spiritual people, well, a little bit they would come down. Now it's going to be totally different, Moshe. God's saying, I myself personally came down into this low world in order to give the commandments and the Torah. And through the commandments in the Torah, the physical world can be elevated to the highest of highs. Also, the same thing should be in each and every human being, and it's Jews first. The intellect, the highest, most pristine, beautiful ideas, philosophies, ideals, values should come down into action in this world. And on the other hand, the physical, unquestioning following, like a foot follows the head without any questions, that should also raise up into our heads. Our minds should also adapt this attitude of sometimes you have to be totally surrendered to God. <clears throat> In fact, that not just sometimes, but that should be our basis of serving God should be like the feet do, unquestionably. So the uppers have to come down and the lowers have to come up. Moshe, the God is telling to Moshe, that's, you can learn that in a small way from Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, but you have to really express it in a big way. And that is today's class. Tomorrow, God willing, we're going to finish the Sicha, and we're going to finish the Mimer. Today in the Mimer, we took a lot of time explaining about what the breaking of the vessels is. So tomorrow, it won't require so much explanation. Oh, and now we'll do the Yom Yom. <clears throat> <clears throat> the second, when is Rosh Chodesh? Rosh Chodesh is tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, tonight. Tonight, huh? I hope so. Yes, that's right. Tonight is Rosh Chodesh. Rosh Chodesh Shvat. How do I tell you this? <clears throat> okay, Yom Yom. <clears throat> These are sayings of the previous Rebbe gathered together by the Rebbe. We are day workers. Day means light. Our work in this world is to make light. Make the world bright with the light of the Torah. 
not only do we also have to <clears throat> fix ourselves up, our emotions, our intellect, our ideas, our values, our actions, our speech, our thought. <clears throat> you, we ourselves have to be the way we're supposed to be. Each and every one of us, individually, you have to work on yourself. But also, our work is to make pupils and to influence others. People that have two feet on the ground, that are well-founded in their belief in God and Torah, that they should be totally devoted with their heart and mind to the true intention of why we're here. It's not enough to learn Torah, <clears throat> the revealed Torah, and <clears throat> have a, they say, a, a value for Torah and the commandments, but you also have to serve God with your heart. <clears throat> there has to be love. <clears throat> Loving God, love the Jews, and love the Torah, and then love all the creations. So what are we learning? We have to make light in the world. We have to make the world a positive place. It's all up to us. And a little light pushes away a lot of darkness. Okay, thank you for being with us today, for learning this class, this wonderful intellect, wonderful uh, uh, wisdom. And um, hope to see you at 3 o'clock. Have a good day with Mashiach now.